Nostalgia is a hell of a thing. Everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Gio here, and today we're talking about DP Filippi and Terry Dodson's Muse from Humanoids Books. This is the oversized deluxe edition hardcover thing, and I've been wanting to review this for a long time and never got around to it until now. I read the story, and I will just say that three quarters of the way in, I was all on board and having a pleasant time reading this with some questionable things inside the book. And then the last quarter just completely threw me off, and I was just gone. So what is Muse about? You're following the character of Caroline, and as she's sort of this guardian or... Uh, glorified nanny to this character Vernier and I am going to probably mispronounce names in this book so whatever but she is tasked with uh, guarding this kid uh, although at the beginning of the story we don't know that he's a kid spoilers and there's something off right from the beginning and I noticed from uh, a reader's perspective, I should say, I noticed that there was a sense of uh, falsehood when you start reading it and, and kind of perverse. There's a perverse nature to the story, especially with the uh, butlers and the way they behave. I, I got the wrong impression because when I first started reading the book, I kept thinking, uh, are these guys, like, scheming something? What's going on? As you start reading the story, you find out that this uh, eccentric uh, young man called Vernier, he has this huge uh, mansion thing and with uh, steam-powered machines. He's a prodigy. I assume this is a, an alternate reality of sorts, and... He's got like a secret garden and a secret workshop. He's got a huge library and it's, you know, he's very eccentric. He doesn't want the character of Caroline, nor do the butlers, want her to see what's going on behind the scenes, I guess. You know, he's very private in his study all the time and they've assigned her to uh, guard him, but also, uh, and, and, and not like entertain, but like... Uh, steer him away from that stuff we don't really know why and that is one of the mysteries we don't know why they're doing this we don't know why the kid has all this technology we don't know why the butlers behave the way that they do somewhere in the first half of the book the story suddenly turns into this uh, weird fetish Alice in Wonderland esque tale where lots of inappropriate things start to happen when the character of Caroline goes to sleep and you start wondering just where is the story headed? The mystery is prolonged for three quarters of the book, like I said at the beginning, and then the final act, all hell just breaks loose. You don't really uh, understand what is happening but yet you kind of do. I mean, on paper, as you're reading it, yes, you understand what's happening. I'm probably exaggerating. But it's a confusing read and kind of contradicts what you've been experiencing so far. And the end result comes out of left field where you just have to either accept that it happened and that's the resolution or actually question the sanity of what you've just read and start doing conspiracy theories as to what is really the purpose of the or the intent of these characters. Caroline, she's uh, a beautifully drawn character. I love Terry Dodson's artwork. He's one of my all-time favorites and the page work here is exquisitely done 
in that there's a lot of background work, there's a lot of character studies with different elements, like you're in the jungle, you're in the Arabian Nights, uh, you, you're in a, a pirate ship, you're in England, you're in Japan. There's a lot of stuff that gets thrown at you. And to have somebody like Terry Dotson working on this book, he's able to create these lush, vivid backdrops, which I thought were really well done. Regardless of the whole um, perfect model look that a lot of people like to accuse uh, comic artists like this uh, for, you know, the way they draw their, their female figures and all that stuff, that, that I'm not going to get into that specifically. I'll just say that the story itself is very beautiful, you know, visually. It's a very beautiful book. I love the color work and I love... Uh, uh, the way Caroline uh, looks in the book and, you know, even the butlers and the young protagonist, everybody looks great. However, the story is where the book suffers. You get this prolonged mystery and Felipe is instead telling us to uh, hold out, wait, and see what the story evolves into before passing judgment on the uh, end result. But I gotta say, I, I, even though I got what happened and I understood what he was trying to do, it's a bit of a jumbled mess. And I think more issues or a tighter adventure or script, but at a hundred and something pages, I think it's too short to resolve what you're trying to do unless you cut some corners and streamline the whole ending and give us a more precise uh, answer to just what the hell was going on? And I have a couple theories. I'm not going to spoil it. My theories involve uh, a conspiracy to replace people with doppelgangers. I have another conspiracy that uh, this is all uh, a time loop situation or a groundhog thing. There's a lot that I could go into which will fascinate you guys. But for the most part, uh, I would say that Muse is a beautifully drawn book, a really interesting premise, basically combining elements from stuff we've seen before, like dreamscape scenarios where the character has to uh, adventure, continue the adventure through dreams and how that later is reflected in real life. And she has to uh, figure out what's happened and put all the puzzles together. There's this long standing mystery. Uh, the characters, do we see a progression in such a short time? Probably not. Uh, the butler gave me the creeps uh, uh, in, in some occasions, especially with his camera. I didn't really understand what was happening. Also, the young man, at the start of the book, he's very different from the ending. But when you realize what you read at the end, it does not make sense why he was so arrogant in the beginning. I don't know. I got confused. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they met well, DP Filippi and uh, Terry Dodson. They, they did a, a really uh, interesting work here. And uh, fun fact, this is actually, I think this was the first ever Humanoids book I got. I have others in my collection, but this was the first one I got. And it was mostly because of Terry Dodson, because I love his artwork. And yeah. The story, art-wise, I think it delivers. Uh, there are a couple uh, questionable things here and there that I know a lot of people will be a little bit iffy about uh, when it comes to uh, dream scenarios and the stuff that happens because it goes into like male fantasies and uh, fetishes and stuff like that, which I know will turn some people off. But uh, again, uh, this is more of an art book for me because the story was a little bit of a jumbled mess towards the ending. What do you guys think about Muse? Have you read it? If not, recommend me something about from Humanoids that you think I would like that involves uh, fantasy. I'm interested in finding out. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Awaken Geekdom here on YouTube. You can always follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Here on YouTube, though, click the little bell icon so you know when new videos pop up and you don't miss a single one. I've got to go. I've got more stuff to read, review, and uh, geek out over, so I will catch all of you on our next episode.